Hello, 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 colleagues, friends, and professionals. Welcome to the Airport Safety Channel, and I am your host, Isaac Otu. It is a privilege to be hosting you in this week's presentation. I hope you join me throughout the presentation and you will learn a lot. Yes. Week, we are still looking at how well do you know your facility and we are working on the parts of a runway. We are taking our time to comprehensively understand what the airport facilities are made up of. We are using Alex 14 Volume 1 Aerodromes Knife Edition and we are in the Chapter 3. Last week, we were looking at at runway 10 parts runway 10 parts and if you have not watched the previous episode i encourage you to go back and watch what the runway 10 part is for and what it is meant or which purpose it serves in the airport it is very important that you go back and watch that presentation to help you understand where we are going with these lessons okay okay so today the question we are asking is how much space do you need around your runway or how much safety space do you need to encompass your runway? We will be looking through the annex to understand how much safety space we need to have around our runway. We will be delving into the annex 14, chapter 3, section 4, which talks about runway strips, runway strips. And it says a runway and any associated stopways shall be included in a strip. So the location of the runway or the position of a runway, it's in a place that we call the strip, the strip. So in other words, the strip is encompassing the runway. The runway has a space around it which we call a strip or which the annex 14 identifies as a strip we are going to learn the space or the distances that is required in order to make up what is called the strip now the runway has edges and ends the runway strip which is encompassing the runway has width which is measured from the center line of the runway the width on the left and the width on the right or the width on each side of the runway is measured from the center line of the runway and outwards it also has length and the length of the strip is measured from the ends of the runway from the ends of the runway or before the threshold and outward before the threshold and away from the runway that is the length of the strip so what is the width required and what is the length required for the strip or the space encompassing the runway length of runway strips a strip shall extend before the threshold and beyond the end of a runway or stopway for a distance of at least 60 meter where the code number is two three or four if you did not watch the uh, presentation on aerodrome reference code i encourage you to read them to understand what is meant by code number two three or four also the length of the strip shall be 60 meters where the code number is one and the runway is an instrument one an instrument one we will have other lessons to tell to tell the difference between an instrument and non-instrument or other types of runways but if the runway is an instrument one and it is a code one, the length of the strip is 60 meters. Now the length of the strip shall be 30 meters where the code number is one 
and the runway is a non-instrument one. So you can see from the above record that usually the length of the strip is 60 meters on each end of the runway. 60 meters on each end of the runway. Width of runway strips. Width of runway strips. A strip, a strip including a precision approach runway shall, wherever practicable, extend laterally to a distance of at least 140 meters where the code number is 3 or 4. So you can see on the screen that the runway center line has extended beyond the runway into the red locations, into the red locations within the strip, which means the width extends beyond the ends of the runway. And it shall be 140 meters where the code number is 3 or 4 and 70 meters where the code number is 1 or 2 on each side of the center line of the runway and its extended center line throughout the length of the strip. Remember, the length of the strip is 60 meters. So the width is measured from the center line of the runway outwards for 140 meters where the runway is code number 3 or four. Now remember this 140 meters is half of the width because it's on one side of the runway when measured from the center line. The other side of the runway when measured from the center line also shall stretch for a distance of 140 meters for a code three or four and or 70 meters for a code number one or two. Basically, this is how your runway strip will stand out. The length of the strip, the length of the strip shall be 60 meters on each end of the runway. 60 meters on each end of the runway. 60 meters on each end of the runway. 60 meters. At 140 meter for a code three or four on each side of the runway, or 70 meter for code one or two on each side of the runway. So that is going to be the basic measurement on each side of the runway. Before we move on, remember to subscribe, share, click the bell, and invite your friends to join the airport safety channel. So now let's look at the inspection requirements for runway strip. What are the basic inspection requirements? The first one has to do with objects on the runway strip. Objects on the runway strip. Now, Annex 14 says that no fixed objects, no fixed object shall be permitted on any part of a runway strip except so these are the only ones allowed visual aids required for air navigation visual aids required for air navigation like the puppy it is allowed or those required for aircraft safety purposes, other equipment that are required for aircraft safety purposes, like meteor equipment, or other equipment which must be sighted on the runway strip. There are other equipment that per their design must be sighted on the runway strip. But Satisfying the relevant fungibility requirement in chapter 5, which we will do as we go along. So all this equipment, be it a puppy, be it a mature equipment, or any other equipment required for runway operations or aircraft safety, must satisfy frangibility requirements. They must be frangible. We'll treat that as we go along. 
In addition to that, no mobile object shall be permitted on this part of the runway strip during the use of the runway for landing or takeoff. So you must desist from driving vehicles in the strip or um, living within tractors to operate in the strip whilst aircraft are landing and taking off. We will go deeper into that as we go along our lessons in future. So on your screen, you can see we have different uh, uh, items or different things that can impact on the safety of the strip. So an object situated on a runway strip which may endanger aeroplanes should be regarded as an obstacle and removed as far as practicable. It should be removed so that if you see uh, 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 broken down equipment within the strip, remove them. Items that are no longer used, concrete bases which are within the strip and are not serving any purpose, remove them. Um, electronic equipment, drones shouldn't be used within the aerodrome. You should also manage your wildlife, manage your wildlife, birds, stray dogs, and other, uh, 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 other animals that may endanger aircraft operations. Do not allow them within the strip. Ensure that they are removed. Grading of runway strips. Portion of a strip from the center line of the runway and its extended center line should provide a graded area to serve the runway in the event of an aeroplane running off the runway. That is, if you look at the screen, you will see a blue area within the strip. And X14 says that for code 3 and 4, 75 meter width on each side of the runway should be graded. It should be graded to serve in the event of an aeroplane running off the runway so that that area should be plain. 75 meter on each side of the runway or 40 meter for code one and code two. The blue area, the length will remain 60, but the width should be 40, 40 or 75 for code three and four. Beyond the grading, that portion should also be strong enough. That same portion, the 75 meter for code three and four, and the 40 meter for code one and two, should be strong enough. Should be strong enough in order to minimize hazards arising from differences in load bearing capacity to aeroplanes in the event of an aeroplane running off the runway. So you can see that this aircraft has gone off the runway and it's within the graded area. That place should be strong enough to carry the weight of the aircraft without causing secondary damage to the aircraft. Finally, Annex 14 requires that the surface of that portion of a strip that abuts or meets a runway, shoulder or stopway shall be flush with the surface of the runway, shoulder or stopway. So the area that transits, the, the transition between the runway shoulder and the strip is expected to flush. One side is not expected to be higher than the other. They are expected to flash and to descend at a continuous gradient that will make it easy for aircraft to just move off the shoulder, the runway or the stopway onto the strip 
without much discomfort or without any damage to the aircraft. So you can see the area circled in red. Grass has overgrown. And this will cause the area of the strip to be higher than the runway. There are other impacts of this overgrown grass on the edge of the strip, but we will treat that in future presentations. Wow, you've made it this far. Thank you very much. And let's have the uh, bullet for the day. Our bullet for the day is to check, check. You need to go ahead and check. Every day, check and confirm that things have been done. Don't assume it's been done. Review the inspection records. Read the reports. Confirm all reporting processes have been acted upon. And then start again and check. Well, thank you very much for joining me and completing this presentation with me. Post your comments and questions. Subscribe, click the bell, and share. And know that we are growing together and making our airport safer. Thank you, and watch out for more presentations in the future.